my name is Kieta Rose, and this is my husband, Aaron. And we have the privilege um, of having a house full of kids. We have five kids here. Uh, Owen is 11, Charlie is nine, Lucy's seven, and they're all school age. And then we've got Leo, who's three, and we have our foster baby at home. Around the same time that I moved out to BC from Ontario, Kieta graduated from McGill University and moved back home. Well, at McGill, um, that's where she got involved with the Athletes in Action Campus Ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had met through that. We yeah. had met like three times through the Athletes in Action Ministry, yeah. but then. But you were after, a student back then, and I was on staff. But after so. I graduated, we were actually yeah. were kind of in the same vicinity yeah. geographically. Yeah. So then we started to see each other more consistently. Yeah. So that's how we exchanged emails and, and emailed, and then eventually went on a date. It almost didn't happen multiple times, but it eventually did. You know, from your little brother not giving you the message that I called. Okay. Yeah, neither of us had cell phones back then, I don't <laughs> think. From the moment we knew we wanted to have a family, we had this sense that like it wasn't ours to like plan how we want it. Like just to always pray like God that you would have us proceed as you want, not to just assume we're gonna have this many kids this age to part, just to be really open-handed and, and, and um, seek him on that and the thing with adoption too it's like we we didn't know when we just kind of knew we f we felt this leaning towards bringing someone in that needed a home um, but i didn't know anything about fostering and 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 so that just wasn't on my radar and you went to a workshop put on by a social worker with the ministry of children and family development and they just shared about the need uh, for foster parents right and so you brought that back to me and was like, I think maybe this is something we need to consider. Like when someone tells you about how many children are in your city that need a home, and here you've been kind of waiting and wondering what God was doing with that longing, and, you know, we're just like, oh, maybe this is what, like why he had laid this on our heart. So many people, you know, as soon as they find out we're foster parents or we have a baby, that's the, the one of the first things they'll say is, we could never do that because we wouldn't be able to give the baby back. And so that for us has been um, something that we just, again, we have to remind ourselves over and over and over that it's not about us. And so for us to say, well, we're not gonna enter into this area of brokenness because we don't wanna have heartache. Um, well, mm -hmm. somebody has to take care for the child. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to be there to do that. and so. Um, so I think we know as Christians that, that life isn't supposed to be easy in every regard. Uh, there is a lot of dying to ourselves. The second kid, that, um, child that we had was for 14 months. And so the encouragement for us in that is that, yeah, he'll never remember us. But, you know, we, we, we know that a huge impact that we had was giving him stability. For 14 months while he was developing, while his parents were, you know, trying to work towards restoration and in, in all their own ways and stuff. And so that's an encouraging aspect for us because sometimes you think, well, they'll never know what you did for them. And it's like, well, that's not really what it's about. Maybe one day it won't be seen as like, you're crazy if you yeah. consider fostering, but like a little bit more normative, you know? Because um, at, the, at the beginning, like we kind of seem like the crazy people and people are trying to talk you out of it, <laughs> right? Out of, out of concern. You know, there's a fear of like the logistics of like, well, what does that mean for my day to day? Um, how, how does that change things? But really a lot of it was just like kind of selfish fears that I had that really that came down to it. It was just like, what am I gonna have to give up? Um, how am I gonna just have to live more by faith? Um, how are maybe, my, maybe I'm gonna be stretched in ways I don't wanna be stretched and just really had to write those down and have and pray, pray through them. But still, I don't have extra capacity. I'm not, I'm not special. I'm really needy and dependent on him for strength. The more children I brought in the home, the more I'm aware of um, just my, my lack and my own personal brokenness and my need for my savior. Don't, don't dismiss um, fostering or adoption or other things God may be calling to you because you're like, well, that's not for this stage of life or that's for someone else or I don't, you know, I don't fit it um, because there are people of all ages and all different scenarios that 
um, our foster parents. Don't don't dismiss it or just assume somebody else will do it. Um, I think that's that, that's a, a great um, thing that we as a church struggle with is just thinking, oh, somebody else will do it. That's not for me right now. Um, and so take the time to actually pray and, and to be honest, and and then allow. Um, God's Spirit to speak to you and then and then be obedient with whatever it is that he calls you to.